there are a lot of artists out there that are just downright frustrated with their art and they do let me know about it in the comments of most of my videos and I don't blame them. I mean, it takes a certain level of neuroticism or, you know, possibly insanity to even consider art as a career. It's an extremely subjective field to get into. And of course, of course, that's going to lead to a lot of frustrations and anxiety. Uh, when you're an artist, you can get frustrated with sometimes just not feeling like your work is good enough, or uh, sometimes you're just feeling like your work is good enough and why the hell doesn't anybody notice? Uh, sometimes it feels like you're screaming into the void, you know? And I, while I'm not any kind of therapist, although I do play one on YouTube uh, from time to time, only because this, this occurs so much with artists, I thought that maybe I could share some of my own experiences with this uh, from early in my career all the way up until not so long ago, I'd say last week. <laughs> uh, it's not something that you get over. It's not something that ever really goes away, so you might as well get pretty cozy with it, I'd say. You might as well buddy up to that frustration, that anxiety, that agitation, uh, that feeling that you'll never really be there because you never really will feel like you're there. I've seen a lot of people make themselves pretty unhappy by primarily comparing themselves to other people. And it's sort of a byproduct, I think, of our time. We have things like Facebook and Twitter and, you know, lots of <laughs> lots of social media channels where other people are kind of showing off their successes or they're, they're accomplishing goals that you might want for yourself. To add clarity, I, I am no exception to this. I have very successful friends and it's very hard to not compare myself to them from time to time. It's a pretty normal thing, especially in the creative fields, because it's all so very relative and there's a lot of luck involved too. And because it's the internet, it's right in your face all the time. And it's so easy to look at somebody else's artwork and go, well, I can draw better than that person. Why don't I get all the likes that they get? Or, or sometimes you're looking at the quality of the work you're doing and you're like, well, why can't I do it the way that they're doing it? I guess I just don't have the natural gift for it, right? And just overall, I think that a, a lot of artists can just be real downright unfair to themselves when doing this. And this is a, a tricky balance in for your life. And it might be one of the most important balances that you can find is to find a sense of spiritual wealth that is sufficient enough that it's not required for you to have as much or more than others in everything, because there's a lot of different categories that we might choose to compare ourselves to others with. And this is consistently a recipe for disaster. If we catch ourselves doing it, we should try to stop that. Because when you're comparing yourself to other people, it's hard to imagine what they may have sacrificed to get it. And I think it would be of great value to recognize and acknowledge that sometimes you might not actually be willing to sacrifice what it takes to get that level of success that you're comparing yourself to. Hell man, this is true for everything, not just art. So be grateful for where you are in the journey. You haven't yet locked yourself in or may had to make those crazy sacrifices that had to be made by the person you're comparing yourself to. For example, sometimes artists give up their social life. They give up marriage. They give up having a family. They give up making lots of money so that they can get a, a attention on their art. Maybe they don't play any video games or play any sports or have any social life at all. You don't know what they gave up in order to master their craft. And it, sometimes to master something requires a, a hell of a lot of commitment. So when you find yourself comparing yourself to other people's successes, maybe consider that there was a lot on that road for them to get there. And maybe it's something that you, you might not be willing to go through yourself. And this is not to say that it's not important to aspire to great heights with your art or your creative passions. I would want you to, and I would encourage you to try to fulfill the highest level of what you could imagine for your creative future. But also recognize that when a yellow belt gets into a ring with a black belt, they're probably gonna get creamed, man. So set goals and challenge yourself within a reasonable level of what what level you're currently at. Don't, don't try to compare yourself to people who've been doing it for 20 years. And sometimes this is like, you know, you, people who just started a YouTube channel four months ago and they're posting once every month and they're like, well, why don't I have as many subscribers as somebody who's been doing it for 10 years? That's just an unreasonable comparison. Of course, you're gonna be frustrated, dude. 
But I know it's kind of a trap that we just keep falling into, even even uh, if after you've been doing it for many, many years. And uh, I, I've always said this before, and I'll say it again, uh, you know, fall out of love with the idea of fame and success uh, or, or getting a lot of likes or approval or attention for your art and fall in love with just the craft and the struggle and the challenge of learning every single day and learn small achievable things every single day it all adds up and compounds into something that's pretty damn impressive over a long enough period of time the key i think is to find any way possible to take that identity of an artist and just stitch it to your personality so that art becomes like an inescapable part of your identity and it needs to because there's rough roads ahead and if it's not a part of who you are at your core then you're going to shake it off for something a little easier. But if it's a part of you, you won't be able to survive without it. So even if you take a break, you'll still always come back because it's it's who you are. It's your identity. Now, I do believe there are some people who just learn faster. They have a proclivity towards certain types of learning or certain types of crafts. And for other people, they really have to struggle with those things to get good at it. But I do believe that anyone can learn to draw, you know, especially at an intermediate to beginner level. And here's a pro tip. The answer is in the fundamentals every time. And we don't always want to face it because the fundamentals aren't always exciting or, you know, getting a lot of attention. But when it all compounds together, it looks pretty damn impressive. And I want to clarify that I go through this too myself. Uh, there are times when I've completely forgotten a lot of those essential uh, core <laughs> Uh, fundamentals, or there's new techniques and tricks that I still need to learn. And they're just modern trends in lighting or composition or color theory. And I'm just a little bit too preoccupied or I've got a lot of excuses too, man. So don't think that I'm, I'm preaching like, oh man, I'm over this. No, man, I still have my challenges that I'm facing too. And it's ongoing. It never really ends. So get comfortable with that feeling that there's an infinite amount of new things to learn. And also, you know, here's the other thing, and I realize this is true too, 90% of people are supposed to quit. Not everybody can be amazing at everything. And so the people who are impatient, the people who don't have a long-term uh, strategy or a sense of reward, people who want immediate results only and they have no patience with things, uh, they'll probably give up in a short time. Not everybody gets to be a Jedi in Star Wars, man especially after the Clone Wars. The point is, is that you can probably beat out the competition by finding any way you can to psychologically trick yourself into continuing to come back to it because 99% of your competition will quit after a month or two. One of the tricks that I use to keep myself going is I keep reminding myself about the things that I love about what it is that I'm doing. I keep leaning into the things that are just more fun for me to do. And sometimes that's stylistically, like. I'm not going to beat myself up over trying to do photorealistic paintings when I could have 10 times more fun doing something stylized and crazy and out there. And the fun that I'm having drawing is going to translate into the art. So instead of comparing yourself to people who are great photorealistic master painters, maybe do something that's more in line with what you're good at that you also enjoy doing. So pivot so that it's it maybe not as the thing that you thought you wanted, but it's something that is a, a compromise of your joys and the, your passions and something that you're also very skilled at. If you can't win at a game, just change the game. You're, you're free to do that. Another trick that I use is that I don't set my expectations of myself so damn high. I know it's really tough in the social media kind of a world where, uh, hell, everybody's like, hey, why doesn't your game look as high budget as GTA? Well, I didn't have 150 freaking million dollars to develop it and a staff of 800 people, okay? Um, <laughs> I have what they call realistic expectations. <laughs> so I'm never really miserable with my own work. Well, that's not true. Sometimes I feel like I could always do something better. But at the same time, I also realize I have to temper that with my expectations of what I'm actually capable of because you need to set yourself up for little wins too. And that's another trick that I use. I try to create short-term goals that I know are achievable, that I can compare to short-term goals that I had a year ago. So you might do a self-portrait and then compare yourself to a self-portrait that you did last year. Have you grown and developed? Have you developed new skills? How could you improve it? And you, you work on one small little win at a time, but most importantly, not quitting, not throwing in the towel, not giving up. And that's the most key thing that you can possibly add to your repertoire of requirements in order to keep growing. 
you almost have to trick yourself into remembering that your frustrations are your your old pal. They're your old buddy. They are some somebody that uh, you get to take along with you. Because the mere fact that you're looking at your art and you have some frustrations with what you're doing means that there's still a ton of ways that you can grow. And that's a wonderful thing. Again, I'm not a psychologist. I can't explain to you how the neurological patterns work or how they connect. But when I changed my mindset about this, I changed my whole life. I realized that you can program yourself to embrace those feelings, those emotions of anxiety. You can embrace them and contextualize them differently because everything in your life is about the story that you tell yourself. When you find you have an underdeveloped skill, oh, well, I'm just not there yet. I'm not a great animator yet. That's a very different thing to say to yourself than, oh, I suck at animating, I quit. I firmly believe that your reality is how you perceive it, how you interpret things that are happening to you. So you might as well choose a story, choose a reality for yourself that is to your benefit, not, not a reality that is to your detriment. And you want to talk about one of the most powerful decisions you can make in your life is to start making decisions to, to support the story that will help you achieve your goals. Not the, not the narrative and not the story that, that keeps you held back. It would be so easy to just go, oh no, I suck at it. And then people feel sorry for you. It's so much easier to just create that uh, dialogue with yourself that you're incapable. You are capable. If somebody else can do it, you can do it. Maybe don't set the expectation that you can do it overnight, you know, but set the expectation of yourself that you can achieve great things, but you'll have to chip away at it one by one and then set out to prove that you can do that. Just one little thing today, set a goal for yourself creatively with your art today. Like today, you could do some of my two point perspective tutorials here on YouTube, 15 minutes and you're inching closer to being a better artist. Tomorrow, it's another little goal, something achievable within your rank, within your, your yellow belt, if that's where you're at. Work within the realm of what your skill level is actually at, set yourself up for small wins. Eventually, you've got so many small wins that people look at your work and they go, how? How do you draw all of these things together so well? Well, I worked on each one individually. I had a lot of small wins along the way. When you run into a challenge that you cannot overcome, that's when this psychology really comes into play. That's when you have to go, no, 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 no. It's not that I'm incapable. It's just that I don't have this skill set yet. And then ask yourself, what do I need in order to climb that wall? If you find that you just can't do that, you can't force yourself to like it, then hey, maybe it is time for you to stop. I did a video about this and people said it was negative. But the truth is, I want you to be happy. I want you to be healthy. I want you to have a great life. And I want you to achieve your creative goals. But maybe, you know, not everybody is supposed to be an NBA player. Hell, I always wanted to be in a rock band, but I, I, I found that I was just better at other things. So find the thing that you're really good at that you also enjoy. You'll have a much more satisfying life. I also believe in practicing gratitude, uh, being appreciative for where you are and exactly what skill set you do have and uh, the current situation of your life, if you can find things to be grateful for, focus on that rather than the things you don't have. Anyway, that's those are my thoughts on this. And certainly, uh, you know, if you are frustrated so much that you're having hostile thoughts about yourself or about art, or you're finding yourself filled with bitterness and resentment, maybe try a different tactic, man. Come at it a different way. And I would I would wish for you to find happiness and joy even in those challenges. And I would also encourage you to look back on things that maybe used to be hard for yourself and recognize the accomplishments that you've made. You know, you may find that you've come a lot further than you're giving yourself credit for. Sometimes it's hard for us to see how far we've come if we're so focused on what other people are doing. And it's important to find gratitude in where you are and what you've achieved, even if it's just a small win. Those small wins all add up into something pretty impressive over a long enough period of time. So let yourself have some small wins, okay? And if it's a deeper, more underlying depression or sense of frustration with life, maybe just remind yourself that it's just art anyway and not really the be all end all. In fact, there's so much more to life than art. I can't believe I'm saying that on an art channel, but far too often artists attach their personal worth to the art itself and how it's being received. Very unfair to yourself. 
your value as a human goes far beyond just your capabilities as an artist, okay? That's, that's not you. It's just something that you can do. Perhaps something that you could do that would really help you is if you're feeling frustrated with your own art is to help somebody else with something that you've got a pretty good handle on. And uh, again, I'm gonna bring up the, the Discord community. I think it's a great place for you to go and maybe help out another artist with something. And uh, sometimes just doing that reminds you of how far you've come. And it also is more rewarding than just finding an accomplishment for yourself. And oh boy, this one, this one got a little heavy, you know? I, I think uh, because I myself have recently gone through something like this, I do every now and then, it never really goes away. And, uh, but I, I hope that you can pull yourself through it and maybe find joy in just doing something fun and simple and get a little win for yourself. And if you have a tactic or something that you use to pull yourself out of a funk or those frustrating days, <laughs> please drop that in the comments below. I would love to hear what some of your solutions are as well. And so dudes, that's it for me this week. I am so grateful to you for stopping by every week. I am so grateful to you for heading over to Steve and wishlisting my Twilight Monk video game that I have in development right now that I'm making myself uh, so very scary to do something like this after so many years of security and stability in my job to just quit and go and do this. And uh, the fact that uh, you guys still come back, I want to keep giving to you as much as I can here on my YouTube channel and through my Gumroad tutorials. So uh, don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any questions, please drop those in the comments below and I'll see you next week. All right, ciao. Whoa, 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 dude, hold on, one more thing. If you're an artist and you're into doing contests to win big prizes, guess what, man? I am a judge for the 2022 Creator Awards hosted by MSI. I mean, mostly MSI is known for gaming computers. They create desktops, laptops, all kinds of gaming computers, but they also make a creator series of laptops uh, for digital artists to create content such as paintings and such as uh, animations and other types of creative endeavors. I guess that's why they uh, reached out to me and I'm, I'm quite honored to be judging in the category of graphic design this year. And the, the challenge is gonna be about painting a utopia, a paradise. And I've done a ton of uh, tutorials about how to paint environments. You might've seen one recently on my channel here. You see that? I'm giving you the tools and I'm hooking you up with the contest so that you can ace this competition and win yourself a fatty, awesome gaming computer or a, a creator series laptop. So if you've aced my workshops and you think you got some chops, well, don't forget to head on over to their contest page and get your entries in. I think you have until the end of May, so you still got a little bit of time. I look forward to seeing what you do. So don't let me down, man. Get them entries in. I've said it before and I still believe it. There is a shortage of qualified concept artists to make all of these big AAA games that we play on current generation consoles. I know this because I've been a concept artist for over 20 years on some of the games that you played. I know it, I know you've played, if you haven't played them, you've seen them. And I'll tell you what, man, I'm retiring from AAA game development to make indie games, but not before I pass on all of my knowledge and experience in workshops, that's right. Being a concept artist isn't just about making pretty paintings. No, that stuff has got to be functional. And how do you learn how to make functional concept art that will get you the job? How will you improve your portfolio? Well, you could go to some art school that doesn't really teach you about game development, or you could take a mentorship with somebody that you're going to pay thousands of dollars for. And maybe even then they didn't actually work in the industry that you want to work in. They never actually shipped games before. Well, I have, I've shipped a lot of video games at very prominent companies, and I will help you to get a portfolio that will get you hired. I mean, you're going to have to do the heavy lifting, but at least I'll let you know what you got to do. Okay. And check out my testimonials and reviews to see whether or not these are for you. And I'm pretty sure that they are. If you want to be a game developer.